Concept is simply trying to recognize the work that you are already doing. You know, we were sitting here saying that the Micronesia challenge um, is much more grown up and works much more smoothly than the two Samoas. And and there, a lot of it is coming out and said it didn't always work smoothly. They've been working on it for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and they were giving us a lot of pointers, mostly about you'll never all go at the same space same speed. So just go at your speed and the others will catch up or jump ahead at times but the, that's basically what you're telling. And I found out that they have very small areas so they need to take care of, take good care of them. But when things need to be moved forward, we need your support and that's where, well, where are we having our if there was one thing that the, the Samoans can learn from the Micronesia Challenge is that uh, they can do it. I mean, it's two Samoans, but it's the same people. They speak the same language. For the Micronesia Challenge, it's five jurisdictions with people speaking, I don't know how many languages. So, and we've gotten this far. So I think... Um, uh, for the two Samoas, it's very hopeful. I think uh, one of the challenges is uh, the, the two different uh, governments. Uh, American Samoa being, you know, an American a U.S. territory, and then Western Samoa being an independent country. Uh, I think it uh, poses certain challenges that uh, the policymakers for both countries need to work closely with each other and collaborate to make sure that it doesn't become an issue that you know just prolongs the the uh, implementation of the uh, two Samoa initiative and i think that uh, once they overcome that and then just realize that they're doing the very same work you know across these two jurisdictions as far as conserving and making sure that they sustain their natural resources i think they'll you know they'll be fine you know they, they won't have any issues as far as coming up with an initiative similar to the Micronesia Challenge. Let's have a little bit of an energizer here. I want you to look at the person next to you. I want you to say one thing that you learned so far, but I want you to do it in an animal language. So it can be chicken, dog, cat, or fish. And we'll do this for 30 seconds, okay? Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> And we all have the same goals. We go about it slightly differently, and that's okay. Was there anything that you learned from the Samoans that surprised you about their oh, conservation? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. What? I learned some of the things they're doing that we don't practice in in the Republic of Palau. Oh, Sydney was really interesting. We do not have that kind of woman back home. I would say, well, we do have women who go out and fish, but we do not have women who's really excited to show everybody that they fish here on the island. The uh, people in American Samoa are, are still very much uh, uh, emphasizing their culture uh, in a very open way. It's something for me to take back home and also see if uh, it's also uh, uh, something that we can sort of uh, learn from and then maybe something that we can also uh, sort of teach our children to make sure that you know that type of uh, the level of uh, of cultural uh, practices that's being conducted here in American Samoa is something that we can continue to maintain, if not improve in Palau.
www.micronesiachallenge.org, where you can learn more about the people you just met, as well as the efforts of preserving the thousands of species of fish, plants, and wildlife in Micronesia. There are downloadable teaching modules for schools, as well as an online video storytelling academy by Dan Ho. And of course, we look forward to your support of the Micronesia Challenge. Thank you. Thank you.